All right, we're going to go over a few things here, and I just want to write up front, let everybody know that when I do these videos, this is just my process, and uh, this is my opinion on how I do it. And if you have a different opinion or you think my opinion is flawed, uh, it's much more constructive instead of pushing the thumbs down button if you uh, get involved in the conversation and maybe put some uh, effort into teaching a little bit. You know what I mean? If you guys have a better way of doing something, by all means, please make a video and uh, share your knowledge. That's what this is all about. So. I'm just one guy with a camera, and I know there's guys out there that, that have a lot more uh, knowledge than I do. And if you share it with people, uh, it'll come back to you, trust me. It's not like you're giving away a secret or anything. So, let's go over a few things. We're getting ready to uh, put our piston cylinders and uh, cylinder heads on. We're uh, refitting the pistons into the cylinders. We set our ring gap. Uh, we pin fitted our pistons. Uh, and we have them back and in, installed back into the uh, barrels. Now this is the way I sort of do it. I don't like to try to put the piston on the rod and then get the ring compressor in there around the studs. And uh, you know, it's, it gets sort of tight with a short rod to get the ring compressor out once you get the piston on. And I find myself scraping all the coating off the piston. So unless you have the uh, pin moved all the way up into the oil ring, you can usually get away with this and uh, pull the piston out of the bottom of the jug and uh, makes it much easier uh, if you pre-assemble the jugs and then put them onto the motor. So we're going to be installing the uh, Berg keepers, the Gene Berg GB203 wrist pin keepers. And uh, I was going to go over a few things in case you guys buy a different brand and they don't have instructions, which is typically uh, how it works nowadays. You just get the part and uh, no instruction. So this is a Gene Berg book of instructions. This is one of the sheets out of it. And when I talk about the book of instructions, this is like it would have been filled with text like this. So it's going to give a little uh, summary about the part. It says Berg pen keepers must be installed correctly to assure the proper retention of the pen, piston pen, as they are made with a sharp side and a rounded side on the outer edge. Install them with a sharp side away from the wrist pen. Incorrect installation could possibly allow the keeper to work its way out of the piston. That was Andrea. Working properly on all pistons to ensure round or square keeper grooves. So I probably, I messed that up because I got distracted there at the end. Here we, it says it'll work its way out of the piston. Working properly on all pistons with either round or square keeper grooves. So anyway, these are things that I want you to check. The piston pins are free and must be floating in the rod and the piston and the rod bushing. Okay, and what they mean by floating is they don't want you to be able to, you know, push them through with your hand. You know, they need to, they need to float. You know, they have to, you know, just drop out on their own, under their own weight. And it should float through the rod and the piston like that. And uh, if it doesn't, you want to do a little work to it and make it, make it move freely in the piston and the rod. And it should just be, woo, woo, woo. You don't want it so loose that you have, you know, clearance in there, but it has to be free. Check all the rods for straightness. We've done that. We also observed that many cranks have enough flex to allow misalignment during higher RPMs of the engine. This changes the angle of the rod journal and the rod. It will exert harmful side load on the wrist pin and keeper. So we've talked about, you know, cranks flexing and uh, we went over sort of why this is a street motor and not a race motor. Uh, you know, if you were going to turn the RPMs up to 8,500 or 9,600 all the time, some of our motors turn in the 10,000 RPM. It just depends on, you know, like some people said small motors don't work good, but you have to turn them 10,000 RPM to make the power. But if you're trying to set a record and your weight to keep it against racing, that's where you learn that kind of stuff. But anyway, uh, it's the importance of having a good quality crank because you do get a lot of flex at high RPM. So... That's why I recommend the, uh, you know, the better quality crank and rods if you're going to, you know, all out abuse the car 
and that that's another reason to be completely honest with your engine builder and let them know exactly what you're going to do because a lot of times the failure it, it's uh more the part of the guy that purchases the parts or you know comes up with the budget to build the motor he'll tell the builder that he's not going to you know beat on it he's going to take care of it and it's just for a show car and then he's doing donuts and drag racing it every week and uh, you know you're going to have failure because there's certain parts you can get away with certain things with so okay number four line board cases are often not done correctly we all know that's true and allow the crank to become or bounce around in the case and I, I've, we've seen that before you know where if the bearings not uh the journals aren't properly uh, bored you know you'll put the bearing in there and it'll be semi-tight in the case when you uh put the motor together uh, the bearing should fit snug in the journal and when it doesn't you can almost guarantee that you're going to have some bearing movement when the case is uh in operation there's a lot of forces going on in the boxer motor you know it's opposed so it's trying to pull itself apart all the time and if the, the line bore is not correct in the case you know it's where your horsepower depletion comes from because it lets the crank you know not stayed center so you're getting uh multiple things going on with an improper line bore and that's why most people just quit using use cases it just causes a lot of issues so we'll go on to number six a crankshaft ground with a taper on the journals could cause the piston pin keeper to come out so you run into this a lot with aftermarket cranks you know they always have a, a taper or a uh, I don't know this could be an improper machine process he's talking about you know where the the journal has run out like say it measures really good at this end then it gets smaller and smaller uh, you'll see that sometimes the machine sets up the wheels really good and then it, it fades off on the journal so uh, <clears throat> any of these items can cause or ensure keeper or any of these items can cause the keepers to work against the piston pin groove and could cause possible knock knock it out causing excessive wear some racers prefer the double snap ring pistons on the pistons on each end of the uh, pin this accomplishes two things it removes all of the rotating thrust load from either side of the snap ring and provides a closer pin keeper in play and there's the part if you want that one and i don't even know if that's still available so that's a few things on uh pistons uh, another thing that i wanted to go over when you when you do your uh Pistons, you take them apart, you got to take these apart and clean them because they have cosmoline in the ring grooves and the rings are never positioned in the right position. And on an air cooled motor, you always want to, uh, there goes the pen, you want to lay them out, you know what I mean? Number the cylinders, put your pens in there, put your arrows the right way, and everything will go really, really quick. You can see the cylinder is lubricated, it's got a thin coat of oil on there. I like to put a little oil on the rings and a little oil on the skirts uh, scooter uh, we stopped lubricating the rings because uh, we had some issues with them breaking into the cylinder you don't want to get excessive with the oil uh, you know don't don't drench the piston and put it in there and expect the ring to uh, break in you know uh, these pistons break in pretty good if you get the aftermarket chrome ring or get like a j and e piston or a wiseco Sometimes you have to uh, put less oil on the cylinder for initial fire up so the uh, chrome ring can mate to the cast iron cylinder. So that's a builder preference and that's something that you'll learn on your own. Uh, you don't ever want to incorporate assembly lube ever on a wrist pin. And you know, I'm, no, I'm just, you guys look at me at some little guy in the garage and I don't know what I'm talking about. But if you go look at uh, like Scott Bischoff, he's won the uh, Master Series Engine Building Challenge. He, you know, builds engines with John Cosby and some of the best engine builders in the world. And if you go look at his videos on YouTube, he has a lot of series about why you never use assembly lube. It, uh, it is too thick. It'll cover up clearances. It'll block the oil from getting to the pin. Lubricate the pin. Lubricate your bearings just like it's going to see in the motor. You're never going to have a little guy squirt and assembly lube in your motor every time you fire it up so this is one of the 
I would say this is probably one of the number one failures in most motor assemblies right here. You know, too much assembly lube on everything and not enough oil. And uh, it's real critical that oil can go through all the galleys and get to the bearings and stuff and not be restricted by a bunch of grease plugging everything up. We're dealing with clearances that are super tight on these motors. And when you put a large viscosity of uh, grease, it can't move out of the way of the oil. And a lot of times, you know, the grease is good for assembly, but it's not good for when the engine's running and you can have some serious issues. So if you don't believe me, go look at some of the master engine builders that put videos up on YouTube and they'll uh, explain why you don't use assembly lube. And I mean, I just gave you a pretty good definition why, but you know, if you put a uh, assembly lube on that pin, it's not going to float. And uh, you can use uh, oil. I use the aero shell for assembly usually, or I use some of this stuff. This is pretty badass shit. I don't know if you can get that where you're at, but it's good for assembly and it has a lot of zinc in it. And uh, I like that stuff. It's real thin too. And uh, you just want to, you want to, you know, you want a film of oil on the part that we talked about. That's normally when you have the failure is when you lose your oil film. And you can see there's a good film on that, you know. It was cleaned with soap and water, it was honed. And now, you know, you can see it holds the oil really good. And we'll be more than, more than fine when we fire the motor up. I'll clean that pin before I stick it back in there though. But, uh. So there we go. I went over that. Like I said, I'm a little dyslexic, so excuse the, uh, you know, the reading. You can pause it, look at it, zoom it in, whatever you want. Or you can just go on uh, the Samba and you can probably find some of this information on there. So this was copyrighted in uh, 1977. 12 of 77, 12 of 79, 1 of 85, 1 of 88, and 8 of 91. So it's a shame that, uh, we don't see more of this stuff on the internet because, you know, it would let people know what they're missing out on when they buy a, a shitty part. You know, you don't get any information like that. That give you a lot of, uh, a lot of things to look at and think about. And, uh, you know, we bought some uh, piston clips. Another thing that I wanted to show you that I do personally is I will go ahead and identify the round side and the flat and I put a little dicum on all the flat sides so there's no uh, issues when I'm installing the uh, clips in the piston I know that if I don't see the green then I'm not good to go and uh, you know these need to be pointing out this way away from the pin you know you want the round edge towards the pin and the flat edge in the groove of the piston so uh, I hope that helps some people and I hope you guys enjoyed the video like subscribe Help join the channel, grow the channel, whatever. Learning how to talk today. And uh, let me take those off because that looks ridiculous. Look like Matt over at Shut Your Face Garage. But anyway, uh, you guys have a wonderful Sunday and uh, make it a big day.